What's up guys, I'm Phoenix Master one and welcome back for some more Fire Emblem Heroes. And in this video, I'm gonna be giving you guys my thoughts and I guess first impression of the Choose Their Legends 3 units that we just got revealed today with a Fae Channel livestream. I mean, it wasn't really a livestream, but you get it. We know what kind of skills they have and also the movement and the weapon type. Um, so let's get started. And before I begin, I just wanna let you guys know that there's gonna be a poll in my community tab. Uh, on my YouTube channel and also there's gonna be a poll on my Twitter so make sure to check that out it's gonna be helping me a lot it's not a final uh, poll or anything like that I just want to know uh, which Choose Your Legends 3 unit you're most interested in at this moment after seeing this reveal so the first one is Camilla and she is second place in the women's division which means that she doesn't really get an exclusive skill um, and she's Queen of Noir, which probably happens in some kind of alternate timeline. I'm kind of expecting that from her voice lines because Camilla never becomes uh, Queen of Noir. She instead passes uh, it on to Leo and Leo becomes King of Noir in the Birthright uh, story. So it's probably going to be something like that. Um, so she is a healer. So she comes with this legendary staff whose name I'm not going to try to pronounce because I'm probably going to fail. So she has got Dazzling Staff built into it. And in the player phase, she gets plus 3 attack and plus 3 speed with the staff, which is really unique. No other unit has that uh, in the game. Like, the healers don't really get any kind of player phase buffs uh, during the combat with their staff. And after the combat, she inflicts the gravity status on target and foes within one space of the target. So it's basically a gravity staff that has got 14 might, it has got dazzling staff refined, and it gives you plus 3 attack and speed. So it's pretty good actually uh, for kiting units, can definitely be useful and she's a flyer so she has got really good mobility and uh, she comes with attack speed push 4. This is a completely different skill from the push skills that we know. This is like that one middle school friend who moved out of the city and then you meet him after 20 years and now you can barely even recognize him. Uh, so this is completely different at start of combat if the unit has got more than 25% health. Then it grants plus 7 attack and plus 7 speed. But after combat, uh, if the unit attacked, deals 5 damage to the unit. Very, very good offensive skill. And the fact that healers have got this definitely increases their offensive potential. Because push skills are super unreliable. Because, like, you take 1 damage and you're done. You just don't get the extra uh, damage output. But with this tier 4 skill, you have a better threshold. And it can definitely synergize with stuff like Desperation and Brazen Seals. Uh, so that damage is definitely going to be useful. On healers, you're obviously not going to be using stuff like Desperation. But healers can make use of Lift to Serve Sacred Seal, which is really helpful in replenishing their own health uh, to be in the threshold of this skill while also healing their allies. And uh, here we can see the stats of Camilla before she is going to be attacking this guy. And here I also have the base stat total and also the overall like base stats Camilla has got. So Camilla is a very very offensive healer. She's basically a colorless mage. I mean it's not wrong to call her that. Because she pretty much gets plus 10 attack and plus 10 speed in the player phase with her push skill. And also her staff. Because she ends up at 57 attack and 47 speed. That's really fast. And with the flyerman buffs it gets even better for her. So she's extremely offensive flyer with good mobility. And she also comes with Wrathful Staff and Attack Tactic as her slot B and slot C skill. She's got Restore Plus. Really wish this was Physic Plus or something like that. Uh, but Restore Plus I guess is fine with uh, so many debuffs going on in the metagame. Her BST is 155 and this is a new one. We don't have any kind of flying healer with 155 BST. Previously in the past they did like increase the BST of uh, flying dagger units and flying bow units. You know the physical ones. They never really increase it for the magical units and Camilla does get that boost. Uh, maybe it's only for Chooser Legends or maybe from now on uh, like these kinds of units will be getting that boost. But nonetheless it definitely helps her a lot. Uh, she's not really all that frail actually. She still has workable 25 resistance and decent 39 HP. And Camilla is definitely a pretty strong contender for the free pick from uh, Chooser Legends 3. Because remember you're going to be getting a free pick. Her 33 base attack might not look very, very impressive at first, but in conjunction with her slotty skill and her staff, she can definitely get pretty powerful. Not to mention she's the fastest healer we have in the game at base 37. Uh, previously, the fastest healer was Brave Veronica at base 36. But still, she has that one inherent flaw which all of the healers have, which is the fact that they cannot inherit damaging specials like Glimmer, Moonbow, uh, Luna, stuff like that, because she would be extremely powerful if she had access to those. But unfortunately, she doesn't. And she doesn't really come with any kind of bomb plus skill or anything. 
Uh, so your best bet is probably to run a Miracle or something like that because you can easily charge it up fast uh, with Restore Plus and also the fact that she's so fast, she's going to be doubling a lot. So Miracle is definitely going to be useful in that regard. Very, very good offensive unit with that Razzle Dazzle combo. Her main competition are Brave Veronica and Bridal Fearm, the two best healers we have in the game. Bridal Fearm is super good in Aether Raids um, and she has got more HP than Camilla, like three more HP. So she's able to have the isolation effect, which is really helpful against dancers. And Brave Veronica, of course, who has got good mobility. I mean, the horse mobility isn't really as good as flyer mobility because you're going to be stuck with like a lot of the terrains like mountains, forests, trenches. Flyers don't really care about any of that, uh, but still she's got that three movement. And Helos Galf is such an annoying weapon. Camilla might be really strong, but Veronica has the annoyance factor, which is really good. Now, some might call it annoyance, and some might call it really good when you're actually using her. In something like Abyssal Maps, Brave Veronica's Helos Galf is so good because it creates the 8 stat point differential between the foe and yourself with the buffs and the debuffs that she does. So it's really, really good for support. Camilla isn't really all that oriented towards support. She's oriented towards hitting as hard as she can because she's angry and she's Queen of Nor. The next unit we have on this banner is uh, Legendary Elliewood. So he looks really, really good. Uh, I believe this is his outfit from the ending of FE7, I'm pretty sure. And he is a Lance Cavalier. Now, there are certainly a lot of Lance Cavaliers in the game, but he definitely stands out because of his legendary weapon and his BST. So it's effective on Dragon and Beast foes. It's called Nini's Ice Lance. I really like that because that's a reference to uh, Ninian. Um, so it's effective on Dragon and Beast foes and gives him uh, plus 3 speed. And in the player phase, he gets plus 4 to all of his stats. On top of that, he also comes with Sir Sparrow 3, which gives him plus 6 attack and plus 7 speed. So he's extremely offensive unit, very high attack, very good speed. And he also has the effective damage against beast units, which is definitely very, very important because we don't really have a lot of uh, weapons or units that can have effective damage against beasts. We only have two, in fact, Picnic Flora and Picnic Felicia. Not very common units, they're seasonal locked as well. And uh, Eliwood is just much more flexible than both of those because both of them are armor units. Eliwood has got three movement because of being a horse unit. So I can definitely see Eliwood being used quite a lot in something like Aether Raids because a lot of people do like to use uh, Mufasa a lot as their super tank. Um, so against those kinds of teams, I mean, Eliwood could definitely help. Even without the effect of damage, he's going to be hitting very hard. And here he's, he's going to be slaying uh, another dragon. And we can see his stats before he's selected, of course. And these are his stats. He has got the highest BST for any horse unit in the game. I mean, technically, uh, because Legendary Eliwood can reach 175 BST with his Legendary Effect, but uh, like outside of that, like the raw BST has got the highest of that at 162. So once again, we can see the BST boost in the effect. He's got 37 base attack and 35 base speed. He does get plus 3 speed from his land, so that is subtracted. 37 attack is really, really good. He also is not really all that bad when it comes to defense. 30 defense is definitely pretty workable, but he's got piss poor resistance. So just a like solid offensive unit who has got effective damage against dragons and BC nets. Definitely going to be super useful in something like Arena Assault because you're definitely going to be facing a lot of plus 10 merge Mufasas and plus 10 merge dragons in general. And we can tell that a slot B skill is attack speed ruse because we know how ruse skills look thanks to Summer Ursula. So if a rally skill is used by Eliwood or targets him, uh, then he inflicts minus 5 attack and minus 5 speed debuff and also he inflicts the guard status on foes in the cardinal directions. And it's pretty good for support, he already comes with a dual rally skill. He also has speed opening which is pretty nice for support as well. So like half of Eliwood's kit is geared towards support. And the rest of it and a stat spread is really good for making him a solid offensive unit. Even though Eliwood has got that effective damage and he stands out because of that, he still faces an absurd amount of competition from a lot of Lance Cavaliers in the game who are much easily available and mergeable, uh, so that's definitely the thing. Someone like Camilla is not going to be facing that much of the competition because all of the other flying healers are seasonal. And now we move on to the first position of Women's Division. It's uh, Mikaya with her Light Priestess outfit. And she is a green mage flyer. Now, we definitely have quite a bit of those, but like Mikaya is absolutely absurd because she has got dual effectiveness once again. Who wouldn't have guessed that? So Light of Dawn is a 14 might weapon which gives her effectiveness against armored units and cavalry units and it grants her plus 3 resistance as well. 
And it also has the reverse blade tome effect similar to Saizo's weapon refine and Gantra's blizzard tome. The more debuffs a foe has, the better it is for her. Uh, so you definitely want to combine her with a lot of chill skills like shrine structures and ploy skills and stuff like those. And uh, Aversa is a really good teammate with her. She's also free in it. If you pick Brave Veronica, then Brave Veronica synergizes really well with Mikaya as well. And she also comes with a tier 4 skill, it's Attack Res Bond 4. If unit is adjacent to an ally, grants plus 7 attack and plus 7 resistance to unit, and neutralizes unit's penalties to attack slash resistance. That is huge, because she has got massive resistance, and she's basically immune to chill resistance, which is really really big, uh, because there is a one meta threat that usually carries chill resistance, so she's gonna be immune to that, and she also has pretty good attack, she can definitely function as a nuke, so being immune to chill attack is also really nice. And we can see the rest of her skills and her stat spread here. She's got Sacrifice as her assist skill, which is going to be functioning similar to how it does in her original version in Faye. Um, and she also has an exclusive skill, because we can see Yune in that. Now unfortunately we don't know what the skill does, but we can definitely make an educated guess. Uh, because Light of Dawn is a reverse blade tome and requires the foe to have debuffs, uh, we can see that Mikaya doesn't have anything like that debuffs the foe, so I'm assuming that uh, this slot B skill is gonna be related to buffs. It might be something like Chilling Seal from Gantra, or it might be something what like Yune has got, because Yune is known for her debuffs with uh, Chaos named her exclusive slot C skill. So I think it's gonna be something similar to that. Uh, it has to be related to debuffs, because otherwise it would be super weird uh, for her to function on uh, debuffs and not have anything in her base kit that gives the debuffs to the foes. And her Slotsy skill is Ground Otters. This is also a very rare skill. It is only present on Bridal Fearm. And as it is, Bridal Fearm is a very coveted unit. Ground Otters is so good for movement for mixed teams. It's really amazing because you're able to have much better movement with your infantry, armored, and cavalry units, which is huge. And we can see that she's got 37 base attack, which is really good. High resistance at base 37. And uh, she's got lowish HP and pretty bad defense and she's rather slow. She provides really good utility with her weapon, base stat, and her color. So in something like Arena and Arena Assault, the dual effectiveness is absolutely valuable. And also in Aether Raids, the most prominent threats we have are Ophelia and Reinhardt, which are seen on a lot of Aether Raids defense teams. Mikaya doesn't care about Ophelia because she's a green unit and she has got good resistance, like good visible resistance. That is definitely important for not taking massive damage from uh, Ophelia's AoE specials. And she's also immune to chill resistance during the combat because of the additional effect of attack respond. So Ophelia might get some AoE damage on her, uh, but when she enters the combat against Mikaya, Mikaya is going to be standing there menacingly with her green color and her massive resistance. And if I'm assuming right, and if that slot B skill is going to be providing debuffs, then she brings a lot of utility to your team in form of debuffs and helps your teammates. Not to mention the ground order support is also really good for mobility. So Mikaya seems like the complete package and for the free unit, uh, Camilla and Mikaya are definitely the top two contenders uh, from this, but I'm leaning more towards Mikaya because uh, we already have Brave Veronica from Choose Your Legends 2. Now even though Camilla is very powerful, she still doesn't have the utility as Brave Veronica with the debuffs and buffs because on Abyssal maps, you cannot let even one unit die, otherwise you're thrown off the map. So that is definitely important to keep all of your units alive. And in that regard, Veronica's buffs and debuffs are a life changer if you have seen my free to play guides. It's just ridiculous how you're able to match these super inflated units with massive stats with free units like Legendary Ike, Fearm, and Air, stuff like that with Veronica backing them up, so that 8 stat differential which Veronica can create is super useful. Camilla on the other hand has got the gravity effect and she's super powerful, so she's gonna be able to finish off way more units in a single combat uh, than Veronica can, because Veronica doesn't have the raw power, I mean she doesn't have that slot A skill, and certainly doesn't have that kind of legendary staff. Um, so they both have their uses, but overall I think for like Veronica is more uh, useful because you have to keep all of your units alive once again. This is completely from the perspective of free-to-play guides because I know a lot of people are gonna ask me this and a lot of people are actually asking me this. So I'm leaning more towards Mikaya, but once again, the choice is up to you guys. Uh, I'm not here to dictate what kind of free unit you should pick. 
um, whichever one is the most popular one, I will choose that and go with that and make guides with that. And even if you do not have that unit, I will try my best to create a solution in that guide, uh, which doesn't use that set chooser legends unit. Um, because uh, I'm definitely trying to help as many people as I can with my free to play guide, so that's definitely the aim. And that is why it's so important for, uh, like, to get the feedback from you guys. So make sure to answer the polls which I have on my community tab and on my Twitter. It's really important. You're basically choosing what I will do in my future videos, so it's really important. As I said, uh, from my perspective, I'm leaning more towards Mikaya because she brings, like, a lot of stuff to free-to-play, like, Abyssal teams. Because, uh, like, Legendary Ike is super good for tanking stuff. But he doesn't have very high resistance. Mikaya here has got massive resistance, is a super good magical tank. She can probably provide the buffs, she can provide mobility with the uh, ground orders, she can also provide the emergency healing with sacrifice, which is gonna be useful when I do not wanna run Veronica or any kind of healer. Like, that kind of healing can be so clutch at times. Uh, so, that's my whole reasoning why I think uh, Mikaya is gonna be a better unit for Abyssal. That's just my opinion. Um, I'm not the only guide maker in the community. There are a lot of talented guide makers other than me uh, who also make those guides uh, So I'm not really too sure what they think is gonna be the best unit, but for me I think Mikaya is a bit better uh, Still, we do not know what our slot B skill does. Hopefully it's good. Hopefully it's not completely hot garbage I'm hoping because Mikaya has got a lot of things going on for her that said still Mikaya is not without her flaws she is super slow and she's gonna be susceptible to a lot of doubles and her HP pool isn't really all that great at base 36. There's also the fact that because she has got a sky high resistance, it means that foes with Luna and Moonbow and Aether, stuff like that, are gonna be able to get a lot of damage from their special against her. And as I said, her HP pool isn't really very high. Um, so that's the thing. I can also see her being a close counter vantage mate in Aether Raids because uh, the low HP pool actually works out in her favor there to get into the vantage range. And the dual effectiveness with good attack stat is definitely going to be pretty nice. So that's something Mikaya can do in Aether Raids offense. Compared to Camilla, Brave Camilla that is, uh, she is much more rare because we only have seasonal flying healers. Mikaya, on the other hand, we definitely have uh, a lot of 5 star exclusive green mage flyers. Um, but none of them are easily available, like we don't really have any kind of free-to-play option, so that's why I'm saying, like, Mikaya and, um, Camilla are the, like, top contenders in my perspective, uh, from the best free pick. Uh, still, we'll have to see what people say, and which unit comes to be the most popular one out of this. And then we move on to last unit from this banner, which is gonna be on with that Dong armor. Uh, so a lot of people expected that, including me, um... <laughs> Even the face says that this is based on Rudolph. This is not based on Rudolph. Uh, he is a sword infantry net. <laughs> Once again, that class is gonna be having so much competition. His weapon is Draco Falchion, which is a pretty cool name. It's effective on dragons. And its other effect is that if he has got more foes within two spaces than allies, then he gets plus five to all of his stats during the combat. So it's pretty similar to Edelgard, uh, Legendary Ephraims, Flame Siegment, and those kinds of weapons. Uh, which uh, want the unit to be alone from allies. It's pretty interesting dynamic between him and uh, Brave Celica because Brave Celica's uh, royal sword requires like allies to be near her, and here Alm um, has to be just reckless and go all out. Um, so that's his weapon. His slot skill is Ken Skill, which is an exclusive combat art which you get out of Falchion and uh, Fire Mecho, Shadows of Valentia. And this is such a good skill because it deals 25% of units attack. And that's true damage, but after combat, if the unit attack, then deals 7 damage to the unit. Now, he doesn't immediately fall into the range of Brazen or Desperation or any kind of those kinds of skills uh, with this damage because of his HP pool, but still, I mean, this can work with uh, other skills eventually, and the fact that uh, it gives you true damage is definitely gonna be pretty useful. And we can see rest of his uh, kit and his stat spread here. So here we can see that he has got chill defense as a slot B skill. He has got this new skill, uh, which is probably like threaten attack speed, which threatens the foe, debuffs the foe, and also buffs you at the same time because we can see that he has got some stat buffs on him in his attack and speed. So that's what I'm assuming. And I'm assuming that this gives you plus five attack and speed buff. Uh, so I'm just subtracting that to figure out the base stats from that. And he's got Draconic Aura as a special and he has got base 38 attack, which is really good. Uh, base 35 speed, 
37 defense, which is going to be making him stocky, and he doesn't have very high resistance. And assuming that uh, I've got the speculation right, then he ends up at 172 BST, uh, joining the ranks of Sothis, Fallen Corin, and Na with that trainee boost. And uh, he's definitely going to be facing a lot of competition. And like even normal Alm is such a good Dragon Slayer with his brave effect with Double Lion, uh, really useful in Arena Assault. Um, but still, like Alm is looking like uh, the most underwhelming unit out of this batch. No offense. I mean, he's still really powerful, but compared to other units, like the new stuff he brings to the table isn't all that much. Plus, the class is still, once again, really, really oversaturated the sword and infantries. The highlight of his base kit is definitely skin skill, which gives you the true damage because he has got very high attack. For example, let's have the screenshot where he's got the buff, he's at 62 attack. With scan skill, he's gonna be getting 15 points of true damage per hit, uh, which is a lot. And if he doubles, then he gets like 30 points of true damage, uh, which is pretty powerful. And the damage output is definitely gonna be pretty insane with Alm, but like that's the only special thing about Alm, unfortunately, which saddens me, honestly, because last year from Choose the Legends 2, a lot of people consider Brave Celica to be the most underwhelming unit. And once again, when people say underwhelming, it's not like they are bad unit, it's just that they are not on like the same scale as the other units from the same batch. So that's Brave Alm, certainly very very powerful but uh, in a oversaturated class type. So that's the first impression I've got from these Suzu Legends 3 units. I'm really interested in seeing what you guys think. So please let me know in the comments. It's gonna be really helpful, your feedback. And if possible, please be sure to answer my polls which are linked in the description. It's gonna be super helpful and it's not gonna take more than a few seconds, I assure. It's just a preliminary poll at this point, just to gauge like the interest and like gauge the general consensus. So that's their purpose, so be sure to do that. So that's gonna be it for this video, I hope you guys enjoyed, if you did then please be sure to leave a like, it will help me tremendously and share this video with your friends who are looking forward to Choose Your Legends 3, uh, which is gonna be happening in mid-August as Faye said. And if you haven't already, then make sure to subscribe for more Fire Mom Heroes content. And please be sure to hit the notification bell and click on all, so that you can always get the updates for my videos whenever I upload. Because expecting YouTube sub boxes to work is like expecting Micaiah to not have a dual effectiveness on any kind of alt he might have. So with that being said, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.